Hi, this is Street Life and I'm Natasha, back at it with a review and discussion of Civil War. Civil War is a weird kind of film. Set in a not-too-distant dystopian future, political shenanigans have taken place and America has split across ideological lines into various factions of militia groups. For the most part, the federal government has fallen, as seemingly only the president and White House under guard of the Secret Service remain, and the last official American government stronghold is Washington, D.C., one of the largest militias plans to invade Washington, D.C. to capture the president and White House. The film follows a group of reporters who are reporting on various factions of the conflict. They're based out of New York, and they decide to travel to Washington, D.C. in hopes of getting the scoop on the fall of the government. While fiction, it's a film that makes you uncomfortable because it calls to mind moments from the recent past. So basically, the largest militia groups are the Western Forces, which are comprised of a militia group from out of California and Texas, and you have another large militia group in Florida. And then there's like other small bands and militia groups throughout the country. A group of reporters are based in New York City, where they, in the conflict, it's kind of taken a turn where it's anticipated that the Western Front, one of the large... Um, of the two groups is going to move on Washington, D.C. to overwhelm the White House. The president is still in place, but doesn't really have much of any power as the rest of the government has seemed to have fallen. Though, like, the military is fighting back against the militia in some places. And so this group of reporters is comprised of Lee and Joel, who are veteran reporters. Um, Lee especially is jaded and suffering from PTSD from previous war reporting. Jesse is a young aspiring reporter who's both naive and reckless while idolizing Lee. And Sammy is an old veteran reporter looking to remain in the mix and get what could be one last great story. The journalists, like, they're not a part of the fighting force. They're just journalists. So they're not going to prevent any of this from happening or whatnot. They're really just along for the ride to report on what's taking place. And so with that, the film is actually quite jarring. On the one hand, you don't get much context or backstory with regards to why exactly American society has fallen apart. It seems that for all intents and purposes, Canada and we can assume the rest of the countries in the world are fine. It's just America, that America has divided along political lines. And even as that it doesn't it bears some resemblance to the tone and tenor of the political landscape of the last few years but the splits aren't necessarily along the same ideological splits that exist in our present it's not like liberal versus conservative democrat versus republican given that you have states such as california and texas which are respectively blue and red states that have joined forces right however it is that it's unclear what exactly has happened, but in less than two years, I think it's stated as being like 15 months or something like that since all of this began. But the country is just in absolute bedlam. There's still some efforts to provide utilities and basic services, but not like what we're used to. When the film opens up, the reporters, Lee and Joel, are in New York City at a location where it seems that some kind of government agency is dispensing water or attempting to do so. But chaos ensues. The citizens and everyday people end up in like a confrontation with the government workers and police and whatnot. There's pushing and pulling, tugging, kind of like reminiscent of the protests that, you know, we saw just a few years ago. But here it's for different reasons. And in the midst of all this, you have someone who plants a bomb, which goes off, killing quite a number of people in the crowd and injuring others. And this is like police officers, militia people, bystanders. And this is just like the opening scenes of the movie, which really sets the tone for the rest of the film. The country is in chaos and has become a war zone. So it's like, if you think of war zones, which we haven't had here within our lifetime, God willing, we won't see something like this within our lifetime, right? We haven't really seen any wars on American soil. America has been involved in wars, but for the most part, they've taken place overseas. But what I found really jarring was that if you think of like the one catastrophe, something along these lines, it would be 9-11. And at the time that happened, I was a student living in New York, just going to school maybe 
five, ten minute walk away from ground zero. So I was in school on the day of 9-11 and was affected by it. I saw the buildings on fire. You know, in the midst of that, I wasn't in the buildings, but I passed under World Trade Center on my way to school that day on the train. And I was just walking distance from World Trade Center. So I certainly saw the broadcast on TV later, but I witnessed it firsthand, you know, like I wasn't in the buildings and I was a safe enough distance away to be scared, terrified actually, but not in physical danger, though I didn't know that at the time. But to this day, it's still like one of the most memorable days of my life. Yet it's something that stays with you even all these years later. And when you think about it, that was just one particular day. Whereas within this film, this chaos has been taking place over several months now. It's not quite two years, but it's more than a year. And what struck me was that if you think about it, people who live in war-torn countries, and not even like just where there's civil wars taking place, but war of any kind, this is the kind of environment that they might be living in for extended periods of time. So it's like, you know, think about people in Ukraine, Russia, now Israel and Palestine and other countries around the world, where with 9-11, that was one day. And granted, the film is fiction, but it made me think about people who live in these kinds of countries. You know, these are journalists here in the movie. They're not like regular people, but we can assume that like the regular people in the movie are like hiding out in their houses as best as they can. They're not members of the militia where they're actively fighting, but you know, the reporters are reporting what's taking place. And so through them, we bear witness to just absolute chaos where you could be walking down the street and you happen across some militia group or something and suddenly your life is in danger. You're moving about just going about your day two militia groups are fighting and you get caught in the crossfire or it's the middle of the night. You're at home, you're a regular everyday citizen, but yet not so far from your house, there's shooting going on. You know, you have two factions fighting and whatnot. And it's like, just imagine the stress, the sense of danger that would exist if you're in this situation, if you're living under these circumstances. And so that was the first thing that stood out to me. With the journalists and militia people, they choose to involve themselves in these conflicts. But it's like, it really made me think about everyday people just trying to live their lives. And there's like a war going on and they didn't really have a choice in the matter. They just have to live in the midst of it. They're not active participants, but their lives are so disrupted. They face danger with the fight and taking place around them. And then it's like on the other side, like for journalists, I found myself going back and forth about it because you think about it with regards to like investigative journalism or like wartime reporting, not to be cynical or anything like that, but journalism is an important part of democracy. When done properly, journalism shines a light or rather it brings light to things that might otherwise be hidden or it's meant to. It can inform the public about what's going on with like politicians, the reality of initiatives that are being put forth, even in the case of wars. When we look back over it, like wars in the past and even in the present, the media can certainly be used as like propaganda machines, but at the same time, they can shine a light on what's really going on, you know, where you have like mountain death tolls and the government might not necessarily be reporting it. You know, um, government officials might be involved with unscrupulous activities. And so we rely on journalists to expose these secrets and nefarious dealings. And so it's like, on the one hand, we need journalists. But then on the other hand, it's a matter of you have people's lives in danger, be that civilians, soldiers, or even like the journalists reporting it. And so, you know, you have these different types of stories and it's like, you ask the question of where do you draw the line between good, solid reporting that's informative and then taking people's misery and struggles and turning it into entertainment? Where exactly do you draw the line? And so it's like, you see here where they're determined to get the story. But at the same time, it's a little bit unsettling where in the midst of two militia groups fighting or a militia group and a government force fighting, you have these heavily armed individuals and then you have these journalists who were just walking around with the camera, you know, bullets and mortar shells and whatnot are whizzing by. And in the midst of this, they're so focused on getting the shot. They're trying to get the scoop that they're right in the middle of the drama. They're taking pictures of the soldiers as they're shooting guns. Not even like it's the end of the day, the fighting is done or whatever. It's like the soldiers are actively shooting and they're standing around taking pictures. And it, it's like, where is too much? 
Because in some instances, it's like, at most, they might have, like, a Kevlar vest and a helmet or something like that on. Early on in the film, it's more of, like, a fluorescent-type, like, safety vest. Like, if you think of those light reflectors. They don't really have any protection. And so it's like... You're in the middle of these firefights taking pictures and the soldiers while fighting are also having to worry about protecting you while at the same time protecting themselves. And it does put you in the frame of mind of watching the January 6th armed insurrection where basically you have these people like overrunning the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And so you have something similar that takes place here where the Western force makes their way to Washington, D.C. with the intent of like making a run on the White House where the president's hold up. And it's like, to be clear, this is like on a far larger scale than the January 6th insurrection in that that was like individuals, right? With assault rifles and whatnot, certainly. But this here is like a well-armed military force. They have like military-grade weaponry, helicopters, fighter jets. It's not like, you know, one or two random people in a Ford F-150 and they're riding into Washington, D.C. in two or three vehicles. It's unclear where they got them from, but it's like military-grade weaponry. It looks like they made a run in an arsenal. They've got tanks, they've got Humvees. It's like the kind of vehicles that you see in pictures from like the Iraq and Afghanistan war. They've got like military helicopters, fighter jets, Humvees, and it's like you just see this stuff just parked up ready to enter Washington DC. And so towards the end of the film, when they're now making this push to take DC to, to try to get the White House, it's incredibly unsettling. In reality, it reminds you of January 6th, but it's like 1,000 times worse. I thought it was terrible because it's pretty much an attempt to overthrow the government. And it's like, I remember being at work and watching the events of January 6th on TV, and that was incredibly jarring. But it's like, it's different because here they're like actually attacking the White House. And it put me in the frame of mind of, like, I'm not the biggest Barack Obama fan, but remembering the vitriol and hatred that was directed towards him during his presidency and even in the time since, you had some people that just so thoroughly hated him, wanted to kill him, and made, like, various threats on his life and whatnot. And it's like you're watching the movie and you saw what happened on January 6th, but that was them storming the Capitol building. But then it puts you in the frame of mind of like, imagine if those people had been activated earlier. Someone had put the battery in their back for them to attack the White House. Now granted, I would hope that what happens in the movie wouldn't happen in real life. You know, that any such insurrection would have been put down, much as the January 6th insurrection was put down. You know, and but it's like, imagine with more propaganda and instigation, it's like you're watching this attempt to breach the White House to personally attack the president. And it put me in the frame of mind of like, imagine if something like that happened during Barack Obama's presidency, if there had been a call for such action during his presidency. So it's like I'm sitting there and the film is just making me like very uncomfortable because it's like, obviously, this is a figment of someone's imagination. But I think we've seen enough in recent years where at the same time, it makes you uncomfortable because of the possibility that something like this could happen. Now, how successful it would be, that could be argued. But just that you have people out there who think about these kinds of things or are willing to do these kinds of things. It's like, it's fiction, yes, but we talk about truth being stranger than fiction. And in joy probably isn't the right word. But I think this points to the importance of art. You know, be it we're talking about paintings, photography, books, movies, TV shows, or whatever. That fiction, it's a figment of someone's imagination, but it can come from a place of reality where they use the artistic outlets and mediums to question things in society or to call attention to things within society. And so with that, like, seeing the movie, there are certainly some gaps. I don't think like it's flawless or anything like that as there are some points where it kind of it lacks a bit of direction 
there's a lot that's left unexplained and that keeps the movie from being a classic or being perfect but at the same time I think that the filmmakers got enough right where it's a good movie that's worth seeing. They really don't do a particularly good job of building out this world, putting you in the frame of mind of understanding how things got to this point. But maybe that's not really even necessary because we can look at the film and extrapolate things from their world into ours and you kind of fill in the gaps for yourself. What's more important arguably is the conversations and questions that you can have as a result of watching the movie. This movie is absolutely for adults because there's a great deal of violence. So with that being said, you would have likely already been an adult, most likely during Barack Obama's presidency, or at least old enough to remember. And during the insurrection, you would have borne witness to the political climate of like, let's say the last, what are we now at, like 16 or so years. And there's some hard questions to be asked with regards to things that have happened, but also with regards to things that could happen. And how do we prevent something like this from happening? We're not to say like even all out anarchy or civil war, but rather just this political vitriol calls for acts of terrorism, you know, and the film, it doesn't answer those questions, but I think by asking them or making the audience ask them, it puts a responsibility on us as the audience to answer those questions for ourselves, to discuss those questions amongst ourselves. And so I think the film was actually very good. It's upsetting. It it's jarring from a visual perspective, but it's depicted war. And that's what war is, right? I think in the past, you look at old movies, even in the present, right? When we talk about war, I remember like the start of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, where you had so much propaganda. And at the same time, you had so many people who romanticized things, you know, this thing of like valor and honor and whatnot. And as usually happens when America gets into wars, that's how wars are often promoted. But once we get into fighting and soldiers start dying, the reality hits home that war is horrible. The perception changes. And I think these kinds of films that we've seen in more recent years, I'm certainly not for glorifying violence or anything along those lines, but these films that depict the true inhumanity of war are important. Because I hope that in the same way that we take inspiration from other kinds of art, that maybe we might start to ask ourselves harder questions when conversations of this nature come about, when there are calls for war. Not just protests, but like calls for acts of violence, that maybe we might take inspiration from these kinds of projects and think differently, react differently. And so with that, I highly recommend Civil War. Watch the full review on the Sweet Life Reviews YouTube channel.